Hi, I'm Marta Martinez and I'm going to talk about the challenges for antennas for future mobile communication systems within the context of the 5G deployment. We saw in the previous uh, video what were the challenges of the deployment of 5G systems. Now we, were, we are going to concentrate on the antennas themselves. What we have to face now with the deployment of 5G is that we are uh, having a higher data throughput uh, both for the front and backhaul systems of the networks. We will need for that agile and reconfigurable front ends both on the access points and in the user equipment. And also we are facing the expansion towards the higher frequency bands, for example KU, K, KA and V band. How does it translate? Well, we will be facing different challenges within, uh, for the antennas. First, a seamless integration of the antennas in the devices and also moving between the different frequency bands. We will need to develop advanced terminals. We will have to implement massive MIMO and also uh, deals with some aspects of millimeter wave technologies for communications. Last but not least, we will have to develop new setups for uh, the measurement and also new procedures for simulating the human exposure effect, uh, effects uh, in millimeter waves communications. What are we talking about when we say that we will need some seamless integration? In 5G, as we saw before, we will have different uh, systems that are coexisting at different fre frequency bands and with different applications. We will have a multi-platform integration. We will have wireless systems like Wi-Fi nowadays. We will have also cellular systems like your mobile phones. And we will have also some applications that are based on satellites. For example, satcom communication, high altitude platforms, etc. We also have the challenge of the communication between different devices, so device-to-device de -device communications, machine-to-machine, -machine, Internet of Things, or what people are calling nowadays Internet of Everything. We will also have to revisit some uh, concepts that were already known and uh, bring them to the next level. We are talking here, for example, of software-defined radio or high-level cognitive radio. We will also have to develop highly complex and highly integrated RF frontends that are close to the antennas and can, are able to operate either at different frequency bands or at very high frequency bands. When we are talking of the mobile terminals, we are not talking about the mobile phones as we are knowing now. We will have very different kinds of platforms. We will have the mobile phone, we will have also tablets, we will have also sensors, etc. The frequencies that we are uh, covering will go from almost DC, for example for near-field communications or wireless charging, up to the gigahertz region and beyond. We will also have to deal with multi-antenna systems to cover the different frequency bands, but also to perform MIMO. And we will also have, for, the, for some cases, uh, beamforming, pointing aspects, etc. and uh, within the handsets themselves, maybe by switching between different antennas or by shaping the form of the radiation patterns. We also have to deal with the increased functionality of the different phones. Nowadays, uh, the, mobile, uh, the smartphones are more than 70% uh, of the market and will be, uh, be, will be growing. So we also have to take that into account uh, when designing our antennas. As I said before, massive MIMO will also be a challenge because we will have to design very large arrays, like we can see here. But to design them, we will, be able, uh, we will need to simulate a very large number of antennas and also to simulate the effects of, uh, for example, digital beamforming. We also have some problems linked to the implementation of these uh, big arrays. For example, the coupling effects between the different elements, the design of the distribution networks and feeding networks, and manufacturing issues. We also have to deal with the problems linked to large-scale signal processing, the possible beam steering of these uh, this arrays, and also what was called recently joint antenna coding techniques. That is going beyond what is uh, uh, the pure signal processing and the pure antenna design, but bringing together both fields to have more efficient antennas. We also cannot forget the multi-spectrum requirements. This MIMO will have to be performed at different frequencies, although with very large frequency bands. 
We said also that we want to cover some frequency bands that are not used nowadays for communications, at least not for mobile communication. Moving up in frequency has also very important challenges. We will need to have a very high level of integration of the different components in these uh, frequencies at millimeter waves. We will need to have very short RF paths uh, to uh, diminish the losses. We will need also new building blocks that are nowadays still not available as uh, commercial off-the-shelf components. For example, we will need power amplifiers with a higher uh, out, uh, linear output power and a better power added efficiency. We also need, for example, low phase uh, noise uh, local oscillators to implement uh, these uh, systems. This will be possible due to the advances in MMIC design in both silicon germanium, gallium arsenide and recently in gallium nitride. We will not only have new com uh, commercial of the shelf components, but also the prices are expected to go down and make this feasible for mass market. Another option is uh, the development of systems of chips on chip. For example, different core chips uh, for beam steering, complete, tran complete transceiver in a single chip that will be more easy to integrate as, uh, than separate uh, mixers, power amplifiers, etc. Moving up in frequency has also the challenge of uh, having advanced beam steering topologies. For example, we will need 3D beam steering or to create different beams multi-beam uh, topologies if we want to perform beam division multiple access. We will also deal with the increasing frequencies with more uh, critical manufacturing complexity and more critical manufacturing tolerances. Another aspect will be the low efficiency of these uh, active components at millimeter waves. We will have some problems in thermal and power management and also uh, as I said, due to the low efficiency of the components and also to the large scale of integration. So we will have to work closely with people that are experts in thermal management to be able to cope with these problems. Also, the exposure aspects will be very important. We will have massive exposure due to the large number of antennas that we are considering. Massive MIMO, for example, the increased number of uh, base station, etc. This all has to be analyzed. Also, the use of new frequency bands will need the development of new standards for the measurements, for example, for near-field communications or the 5G bands. We also have the problem of the simulation aspects. We will need uh, to uh, modernize our human models, uh, analyze them for different frequencies, and also we will need higher resolution in the, in the models for numerical simulation. If you go up in frequency, the models will have to be more accurate at the discretization, the cells much more, uh, smaller. This will be a challenge for the simulation. We also will need to have new measurement setups uh, adapted to the new needs of 5G. So, as a summary, uh, we can say that uh, in 5G, we will have an emphasis on optimized radio performance to lower uh, the energy consumption and uh, optimize the, uh, the performance of the system. We will need innovative front-end solutions and uh, we will need to uh, take interdisciplinary approaches that are not only based on electromagnetic design, but also new paradigms and integrating uh, know-how from all the different areas. This will need to open new research lines for antenna design. Thank you for your attention.